electrical power, the backbone of any country's economy. In this video, I'll discuss the problems and the solutions, of course, that India faces in the transmission and the distribution of electrical power. So without any further ado, let's understand the flowchart. You see, it's first generated in the Gencos, the generation companies like NTPC, all the thermal power plants. Then it goes via transmission lines through transmission towers and substations and the companies which actually do this task are known as DISCOMs, the distribution companies. And finally, it is distributed to all the consumers which can further be of three types. They can be industrial consumers which usually consume high voltage power because they, own, they, ha they have their own substations, power control rooms in which they have transformers and they can step down the voltage as per their own requirements and needs. We have commercial consumers and uh, domestic consumers. So if any of these consumers consumes at high tension, then of course the cost of transmission will be less because we know that P equals VI. So for fixed amount of power, if the voltage is less, then the current will be high and a high current implies a high cost of transmission. So when you know, customers take high tension power. In that case, the voltage is high and the current is low. That means the overall cost of power supply to them decreases. Anyway, if it is low tension, it's usually 230 volts. If it's one phase and 400 volts in case it is three phase. So far, so good. But these discounts have a problem, which I shall illustrate with the help of an example. So let's consider that you know all these transmission lines and transmission towers all of these kinds of infrastructure incur a certain cost of supply of electricity let's call that the the, the aggregate cost of supply of electricity let that be say rupees 10 per unit of electricity but then the state government intervenes and says to the discom that please don't sell it to the consumer at rupees 10 per unit it will be too much please sell it at rupees 9 Per unit. Well then the discom says that who will give me the rupee 1 that I will be incurring as a loss and the state government says that okay rupees 1 will be given by the state government to the discom as a subsidy. Okay discoms agrees. Then the state government again intervenes and says that no you better sell it at rupees 8 per unit and then the discom says why? because it will be too much for the normal consumers to afford and uh, then the discom says that rupees 9 to rupees 8 where will I get the rupee 1 from and then the state government says that okay you can realize that rupee 1 later from the consumer and since you'll get that money later from the consumer you can call it an asset a regulatory asset but it might as well become a non-productive asset because it's not very easy to realize a certain sum of money that keeps on increasing you know even next year this rupee 1 will become rupees 2 and uh, it will keep on increasing and ultimately under the burden of it it might as well become a non-productive asset I'll come to that but now the discom is ready to sell his electricity at rupees 8 per unit but then the state government again intervenes and says that no you better sell it at rupees 6 per unit to the domestic consumers and rupees 10 per unit to the industrial consumers. You see the average of these two is rupees 8 so you'll still be getting rupees 8. And then the discom says okay we'll do so. This is called by the way cross subsidy. Okay that's interesting. This rupee 1 subsidy by the state government to the discoms is oftentimes pending for a large period of time. So this thing is pending. This rupee 1 that the discom has to kind of realize from the customers later on in the future also keeps on pending because the value of this regulatory asset keeps on increasing and then it might as well become non-productive asset. Oftentimes domestic consumers also default. And so a lot of 
domestic consumers also don't pay money in time. A lot of this is also pending. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of industrial establishments had to literally shut down. Some of them got into an alternate day arrangement. So the overall demand of electricity, of electrical power from the industrial sector also plummeted. In other words, the industrial sector, the sector which was buying electricity at such a high price, suddenly plummeted its demand. So this also decreased. All of these things combined resulted in high cash crunch for the discoms. But the discoms have to keep the business on and so they go into debt and become extremely debt ridden. And they have a large amount of loans which are pending. So the government of India came with an Uday scheme, a scheme by the name of Uday, in which it said that 75% of these debts should be bought by the state government and then the state government should convert it into bonds, guarantee it and then sell it to prospective buyers. The remaining 25% of the bonds can actually be sold by the discoms themselves. In other words, all of this debt is converted into bonds and then those bonds are sold and the money from selling that bond is taken and is given to the creditors of these discoms. So if these discoms owe some money to say NTPC, it will be given to them. But in financial year 2020, this Uday scheme uh, was uh, completed and it didn't actually meet its targets that good. Okay, the fact of the matter is that the because of all these factors, the average revenue that was realized was much less than rupees 10 per unit. In other words, this gap went as much as rupees 5 per unit in the financial year 2020. This is the ACS ACR gap. Moreover, the aggregate technical and commercial losses, technical losses that means in the transmission lines, commercial losses because of theft and bad metering, this aggregate technical and commercial losses became almost 20% of the total uh, money uh, that was sold. So it wasn't a very good number. And uh, when we discuss AT&C losses, let me tell you, there's one thing called the power factor, which is equal to the real power di divided by the apparent power. So, if this apparent power is equal to the real power, in that case, this power factor will be equal to 1, which is its maximum value. And the power factor can be equal to 1 if the inductive load in the circuit is minimum. So, the transmission lines have to be improved the components have to be improved so that the inductive load in the circuit is minimum. So that is a technical aspect to reduce the ATNC losses. Another concept is load factor. That means load factor is equal to the average power that is demanded divided by the peak power. So for example, at 12 o'clock in the noon, if, I, if it's summer season and 12 o'clock in the new, noon, it's the hottest and I switch on all the air conditioners, a certain peak power is demanded by me. But on an average throughout the day and throughout the year, I don't consume that much. If I consume say five uh, kilowatt power on an average, and if I consume a peak power of say 10 kilowatts, then my load factor is 0.5, which is pretty bad. So for a country as a whole, if the load factor becomes closer to one, in that case, the 
transmission efficiency of the system increases so during the peak hours if so in order to increase the load factor i can either increase the average power or i can decrease the peak power so if i usually use power in the range of 6 to 8 kilowatt then it should be the duty of the discoms to penalize me in case i consume power greater than 8 kilowatt this is just an illustrative example so that kind of a tariff should be there which penalizes for exceeding the peak consumption moreover if you see this diagram you see the transmission lines transmission towers substations all of these are fixed assets and there is a certain fixed amount of charge for their operation and maintenance however the tariffs that the consumers give it varies based on their consumption so whereas the input is having a fixed cost the output is having a variable tariff although the tariff has a fixed component the fixed component should be increased that is the suggestion of many experts the cross subsidies that I talked about has to decrease moreover you have a tariff structure in which a tariff structure in which there are several slabs at the lower slabs the tariff of electricity if you consume say less than a certain amount of uh, units then you have to pay extremely low amounts of money per unit of electricity consumed now this is also prone to misuse and all of these factors taken together don't make the tariff structure in india cost reflective there is one more thing that i'd like to say that i had already discussed that the power which is transmitted at high voltage is cheaper to transmit whereas if you transmit it at low voltage it is costlier to transmit and i had discussed the reason for this so if if we consider a tariff structure in which all customers connected to the same voltage level have the same tariff that will be better than giving different than than taking different tariffs from people based on their profession whether they are operating a factory or whether they are operating a laptop in their domestic homes so based on the their profession or based on the kind of end use of electricity the thing is actually done nowadays but it should rather be dependent on the voltage that they are taking power from if there is high tension then it should be a cheaper tariff if they are taking low tension then it should be a costlier tariff it should be something of that sort it should be more cost reflective you see in india there is about 350 gigawatt in fact more of installed capacity however even during peak hours we don't consume more than 180 gigawatt as a country so you can imagine that the load factor of india as a country is so low and there are a lot of reasons let us go to understand the way forward now the first thing you see as i had already discussed that this this cost of transmission is more or less fixed and moreover these discoms get into a power purchase agreement from the gencos with the gencos on a long term basis these are long term power purchase agreements but you see the kind of volatility that is happening in the short term on the consumer side if they don't get money from here they keep on getting power from the left hand side but if they don't give the power here because of lack of demand it all gets wasted so the first thing that they should do is that they should switch to short term or at most medium term PPAs because long term PPAs are not good moreover renewable energy is coming strong in fact solar energy solar energy is having uh, a, a 
a tariff of about rupees 1.9 per unit, which is pretty low. Whereas electricity through thermal power plants is having a tariff of 6 rupees, 7 rupees per unit. So considering that, there should be open competition. And that means that more and more discoms should be allowed even from the private sector and the people should actually be given the freedom to choose which discom they want to buy power from. This thing has been done through an open access policy under the Electricity Act of 2003 for industrial consumers but uh, it has not been done for normal domestic consumers I believe. Under the Atmanirbhar Bharat package a stimulus package was given to them which I think was about rupees 90,000 crore and then it was increased as well but this is in the form of a loan it's not a liquidity injection it's a loan which is given at more or less the market rate so cheaper loans or stimulus has to be provided that is another way forward this cross subsidies has to be reduced reduce cross, subs cross subsidies and even rationalize those subsidies if possible moreover you have to if you increase your total generation capacity that's the best guarantee against preventing load shedding because if you do maintenance activities then of course you will if you increase your capacity then you decrease chances of load shedding because even after doing maintenance activities you will have enough electricity to supply it to the villages and all the places that actually need it but even more than that give last mile collectivity last mile connectivity properly that should be improved if possible give it underground because during rain and hail storms this last mile connectivity which is overhead often gets destroyed and uh, repairing takes a lot of time so bury it inside the ground and you can transmit the long transmission lines overhead but bury the last mile connectivity under the ground and that can actually uh, help in the longevity uh, of uh, these transmission lines so these are some of the suggestions that can be adopted ATNC losses have to be reduced no doubt about that if all of these suggestions are adopted probably it's better than to just symptomatically treating the discoms by converting their uh, debts into bonds you better have structural reforms which will make these discoms more competitive sustainable and workable this is all for now in order to get more such videos do subscribe to news and statics and until next time bye bye